Home, it's where you build your legacy, where traditions are started, seeds are planted, meals are shared, and stories are told. We are Chris and Natalie Carpenter, owners of Story Real Estate, and our team of top agents helps people find homes in Moscow, Idaho, and around the country. Have you thought about a move? Contact us to get connected with a top agent who shares your values and puts your family first. Or reach out to us about our Moscow Relocation Guide. Wherever you're looking to go, we can help you find home. Call us at Story Real Estate or visit us at storyrealestate.com and start building your legacy. Once again, I'm left doing Gabe's job. Welcome to Cross Politic. I'm the Chocolate Knox. Pastor Tony. Where is Gabe? Gabe, Gabe is. G you're not Gabe. I didn't know he wasn't going to be here. <laughs> yeah, well. He I set guess... this up and then left. Yeah, he texted me about this and it suddenly didn't show up. Okay, yeah. did he tell you what we were going to be talking about? A little bit. Okay, oh. all right. <laughs> Hey, this year our Fight, Laugh, Feast conference is at the Ark Encounter yes. in Kentucky on the politics of six-day creation. The politics of six-day creation is the difference between a fixed standard of justice and a careening standard of justice. It's the difference between the corrosive relativism that creates mobs and anarchy and the freedom of objectivity, truth, and beauty and due process. The politics of six-day creation establishes the authority and the sufficiency of God's word for all of life. From what is a man or what is a woman? When does human life begin? How is human society best organized? Well, it all starts in Genesis 1. So come Thanks. here, uh, Ken Ham, uh, Pastor Doug Wilson, Dr. Ben Merkel, Dr. Gordon Wilson. We got a lot of Wilsons going on in this house yeah, right now. Yeah, that's right. Yes, yeah, and they're all related. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I'll be speaking. Joe Rigney's going to be there. And? Oh, yeah. We can talk about you this. Yeah. Michael Foster. Michael Foster. Oh, also oh, that, I wasn't thinking about him, but he's definitely going to be there. But we, we have our, our conference. Um, oh, the live the show. The live show. Can we talk about that? I, I should we just do what Gabe does and yes, do it? Since he's not here, let's be Gabe. <laughs> yeah, and so, you know. Stephen Wolf's going to be there. Stephen Wolf. Yeah, uh, we're going to talk Christian nationalism. Pastor yep. Wilson's going to be there. And Joel Webin. Joel Webin is going to be there. Yeah. Joel Webin, all oh, those such a troublemakers. Yeah. You right. know what? I want to try and see if we can. I, we're thinking about how to organize this. I want to get them to apply Christian nationalism practically all the way yeah, out. Not right. just have the conversation of whether or not this should be a Christian nation. Duh, all of them should be. Right. <laughs> but what does that look like practically? And work that out. Because I think yeah. I'm going to make them all theonomous. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Anyways, we're going to be there. Uh, th then we'll have that live cross politics show. Mark your calendars October 11th through the 14th. Oof. October 11th through the 14th. We're going to be fighting, laughing, and feasting. We kick it all off with beer and psalms the first day. We have this amazing lineup of speakers, a rowdy Christian merch, a Sabbath feast to wrap it up. Uh, maybe an infant baptism while we're at it. They, not, they, they keep saying they keep writing that in because it feels so good to say. I know. I, I mean, we are at the Ark. I guess we're at the original. We're baptism. talking about baptisms. Yeah. Yeah. Visit fightlifebeast.com for more information today. Hey, we're grateful to have with us Vanessa Rosa. Did I say yes. that right? Rosa. Rosa. Did. All right. Well, she's an entertaining, innovative streamer on the platform of Twitch, known as Gothics. Oh my goodness. A beloved member of the streaming world, she was suddenly exiled from her community of creative partners and colleagues when she stated an opinion that she did not know was unacceptable in their eyes. Vanessa Gothics, thank you for joining us on Cross Politic. Thank you for having me. Uh, your feed is kind of laggy, so I'm sorry if I'm catching like every other sentence, <laughs> but uh, I'm great. Happy to be here. Great. Well, great to have you. And if we need to repeat anything for you, please feel free to just ask. That's true. And we have with us Graham Wilson. Graham uh, is a longtime resident of Moscow, creative genius. I hear um, part of uh, a, a creative agency called Small Media Large. You got it. Did I get it right? You got it right. And, and you got to fill us in. What else? Uh what other and things that are, I do? And why are you here with us with, with Vanessa? So I'm here because I directed the documentary that uh, is about Vanessa, and it's just called Gothics. We just ran with her okay. name yeah. as the title for this documentary. And I'm here because I made it. Yeah. I made the thing. I reached out to her, and we got this thing started two and a half years ago. Okay. And uh, wow. yeah, we're so, hopefully coming up on release soon. Yeah, so the yeah. way I found your film was because I was going down Lore's uh, list of things to fund. Oh, okay. And so I was going down. I was like, okay, all right. Mm, all right, interesting. All right. And then I found this one because some of them were like for kids stuff. I'm like, yeah, okay, that's right. great. I, that, but then there's like, what's for dad? Right. Like, what's, what's, what's <laughs> going what's, what's to be some grown folk stuff? And I go down and I find Gothics. I'm like, oh, well, the title has me. So I want to show you guys what I saw in the trailer. Let's play the trailer of Gothics. Okay. 
there is no redemption. There is no conversation. It is whatever we say about you is truth and you're done. One friend did it with us. He heard our side of the story and he was just like, oh wow, this is completely understandable. I see where you guys are coming from. Then he writes us later on. Whoa. We weren't the right type of black friend. I'm breaks on this. I, just, wow. I don't know how much out of this head time I need I'm at right, right now. I need to clear my head. I haven't been feeling myself. myself. I think it's time for me to take a break break. Like I just feel like I'm kind of floating without any purpose right now. They brought up my boyfriend. They wanted to know if he was white because if he was, that would have made sense to them of why I was acting like this. What? Seeing people automatically say, okay, the reason you have a problem with this is because you're racist is, is an issue for me. I said, we need to stop doing this. I'm talking in a matter of 24 hours, I became Over the course of four days, I had more racism towards me from other people that looked like me than in my entire existence on this planet. What's the next step once they realize I can't, you know, attack someone on social media and make them disappear, so what do we gotta do now? Is physical assault okay? And I just see like these pools of blood. And I'm like, okay, I'm panicking now. <sighs> so, oh, man. so when you start asking, like, what kind of films need to be made, or you want to be like, take my money, <laughs> take my, I want to see well, it. How much do you have on it? <laughs> I'm right here. <laughs> He's accepting. So, right? so I guess Vanessa, let's I start with you. I just got to know why do you hate black people so much? <laughs> Uh, well, I was born this way, so, you know, it's, it's just in my nature, it's in my genetics. It's, I also suspect it's a Rhode Island thing, but, uh, you know, I, I actually don't hate black people. I care deeply about humanity in general, and I think the most unloving thing you can do is not criticize the bad aspects of how someone lives their lives. And I see that a lot with, uh, I think, the collectiveness of the black community in particular. It's mm. Everyone does what they want, and and you're not allowed to criticize or question any of it. So wait, I, I saw the. We just watched the trailer. Yeah. I haven't. I have. This is the first. I mean, I'm sorry. I, I haven't been following. I just I actually just found you on Twitter. I, I'm I, I'm your <laughs> I'm one of your newest followers. New followers. Uh, yeah. But what did you say? What did you uh, say that got you in trouble? So uh, I made the mistake of um, criticizing the uh, the social backlash behind The Little Mermaid because uh, Disney was going to make a new Little Mermaid movie that just came out. They turned her black and uh, people, including myself, were confused by that. Like, why is why is Ariel black? I thought she was white. Yeah. And the narrative was, well, if you have a, an issue with this, you must be racist. And I thought that that was so wrong because there could be a multitude of reasons of why people don't like the casting. And that was enough for black Twitter. Uh. <laughs> Okay, so I can't believe it was over Little Mermaid. Yep. It's, okay, I'm still. This is. I want to work yeah, this out a little bit. Right. So help me understand for something. You were in kind of the woke world. Were you considered yourself woke at the time? Where Where were you at? What What was your position? I feel like I was mid woke. <laughs> okay. <laughs> woke. It wasn't that bad. <laughs> okay. So were you were you into Me medium medium woke? So, well, okay. Here, medium. Let's, let's find out. On the, were you BLM person or no? No. No BLM person. Oh. Okay. So you, I was because my part of my question was how did this narrative pierce the woke veil for you? But you weren't all the way in, so part of your head could hear it while the other part couldn't. Is that fair to say? Absolutely, yeah. Okay. I, uh, oh yeah, I had, um, you know, I, I was uh, Trump and conservative derangement syndrome. Didn't like Republicans. Um, you know, thought that you know Democrats were my savior. Uh, so I, I had a lot of like the political uh, leanings of wokeness, but some of the social stuff I wasn't on board with. Okay. okay. All right. Oh man, this is going to be interesting. Okay. So I saw the film last night. And when as I was watching the film, Graham, I realized that you guys started making this film, but it didn't seem like it was intended to be the story that it turned out to no. be. So when did you guys start making the film? I guess, why did you decide even yeah. to make this film in the beginning? Yeah. And then what happened that turned it towards where it ended up at? So we decided to, or I should say I, I decided to pursue this film because I had lost a very large corporate client right uh, beginning of 2021 because of some social justice warrior stuff. And 
after sort of being freed from that, that contract because of it, I had this feeling of whatever project I do next needs to be something that matters. Um, and I had just discovered Vanessa like two weeks before that. Okay. Found, found her channel on YouTube. Uh, God bless the YouTube algorithm this one time uh, <laughs> that it, it introduced me to a video that was titled white privilege is a crutch. And uh, it uh, was a pretty ang- ambiguous title. White <laughs> privilege is a crutch that could go either way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And I saw the thumbnail of, of her face on there and black woman with the side shave haircut and the piercings and tattoos. And I'm like, okay, well this is a liberal uh, who's about <laughs> to tell me that I am uh <laughs> evil <laughs> for being white and but i was just curious enough to click on it uh to see like okay well what's the argument yeah. what's the argument here and i click on it and i hear the complete opposite i hear just this very concise coherent argument from the uh, more conservative position and i was like who is this woman and i went to her channel i started watching all of her videos I had that happen two weeks before I lost this client. Okay. And my first thought was, I would love to make a documentary about that, that chick. And so I started reaching out every which way I could uh, to try and get her to agree to this. And uh, it was like a week till I got in contact. And um, after that, it was a few conversations and then she was down and I was in Rhode Island before we knew it. But that was beginning of 2021. I was in Rhode Island, February of 2021, starting to film this. And the original idea was I wanted to tell the story of someone who still sort of aesthetically uh, identified with much of the liberal uh, left side of the culture of of America, uh, but just had this massive political awakening because of this absurd canceling uh, cancellation that happened knowing that that, you know, the story could change and the story did change as we were filming it. And um, so, yeah, we started filming at the beginning of 2021. So this is like pandemic strong right now. Pretty, right. Pretty strong. Yeah. Yeah. And so what changed Vanessa in the middle of this? <laughs> uh, a lot. Uh, I found Christ in the middle of it. Um, Whoa. That's yeah. a lot. That's a lot. That's, that's like everything. <laughs> yeah. That's a lot. <laughs> Uh, you know, word word on the street is is if you keep consistently pursuing truth, eventually you end up on the cross. And I thought people were mm. joking when they said that. No, it's real. <laughs> Very wow. Real. Wow. Wait, wait. So, so, so. Let, let's go to your side, that's real quick. I, I know there's more. We need to finish yeah, yeah, this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's finish mm-hmm. this. But so, random white guy from Idaho <laughs> reaches out to you. Mm-hmm. Um, and what are you thinking? What a weirdo. Who is this man? I'm not, I'm not going to respond. And she didn't for yeah. a little bit. What What made you respond? What made you think maybe I should give this guy a chance? Uh, he was persistent. And then it wasn't until we actually had our first Zoom call where I saw his family walking in the background. Oh, and I'm wow. like, okay, he's normal. So I guess I can trust him. <laughs> I'm, not an in, I'm not an incel. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. So, but but then you just dropped this bomb. You said I found Christ um, mm-hmm. in the middle of this. I mean, I don't know how the story goes together, but can can you tell us that story? Yeah. I mean, I think um, with my political awakening, I was you know during that journey, I was already dealing with a lot of psychological turmoil because of my cancellation and things like that. Yeah. And and I never quite address that and in fact i feel like my mental health in some ways got worse because as i was pursuing truth i'm going down these rabbit holes and 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 understanding exactly what's going on in the world with all the corruption and all the lies and stuff like that so for me it's like my my mental health was getting worse over time and i found myself just getting just so uh encapsulated in despair and i didn't know how to get out of it And so when we were filming, that's when uh, Graham started sharing the gospel with me and really challenging me on what I was doing to address all of those problems. Because at the at the time I was in this cycle cycle of going to therapy and smoking weed and thinking that that's somehow going to address all of the problems I'm dealing with. And it wasn't Mm. what what did uh, I mean, was was it just 
little by little, or were there any particular conversations that you had with Graham where something clicked? Yeah, I was thinking that too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I think it was just the, the idea of, as I said, him challenging me on these things. Like, okay, so you've been depressed for a while. What have you done to deal with those things? Are those things working? Um, and every time that he would catch up with me to find out how I'm doing it. So I was sort of like in this same state of mind, no progression, just mm-hmm. doing the same things over and over again. And I think little by little, our conversation and his willingness to talk to me about Christ, because prior to then, I didn't really like having these talks. I was a little bit of like an agnostic, but in some ways when people would bring up God, I'm just like, I don't want to talk about this. This is weird. I feel like you have an agenda, Mm -hmm. but the way that he presented the gospel was so different to me. um, And it was unlike what I was used to. And I think that's why I was, um, I I was more warmed up to the discussions than I would have been before. What, What was so different about it? He just seemed normal. Like it wasn't racist. Like I like in high school I used to watch people on, on the news like Westboro Baptist Church, for sure. example. Okay. And, and and if I if I, that's all I see of Christianity, I just assume angry, angry people. Right. <laughs> and he wasn't angry. It's like he had questions and genuine concerns about how I, I was living my life, but it wasn't like this just condemnation of, of my every existence. And I, I, it was just so different from what I was expecting. So you're not Westboro Baptist. Congratulations, well, Graham. I didn't say I wasn't. <laughs> you just didn't act like it. I at the just time. didn't. No one asked me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you tricked her. Yeah. Oh yeah. Real good. <laughs> so, uh, uh, Vanessa, as I was watching the film, there seemed to be a trajectory. It seemed like it started with just like, well, everybody who might have a problem with the Little Mermaid might not actually be a racist, but you felt like there was a bunch of racism out there already. But hmm. maybe on this, is that fair enough to say? Like you felt like Trump might have yeah. been racist and that all that stuff. How could you support Trump at that time? You know, is that fair to say? Yeah, I think you know, with racism in general, like I, I, and I still hold this belief, like if. If racism is out there, it's out there and there's not much you can do about it. And I think with the context I have now being a believer, it's it's I understand, well, if you really wanted to fix that, you have to change someone's heart. And you don't do that by marching Mm. with signs and putting up black squares on your Instagram. That doesn't solve anything. Um, And I care more about what people actually do than what they think, even though what they think you know, sometimes relates to their actions. But, you know, if someone, if Trump truly was a racist, uh, okay, but what do the policies look like? Are are the policies uh, contrary to what I think a racist president would be doing? No, I think the black community was thriving more with him in office than what we have now. Yep. Okay, so then there's... Oh, man. Mm -hmm. That'll get you canceled. I was going to say, that that right there just probably got us canceled. (laughs) Um, You're welcome. (laughs) We don't need any help in that area, Vanessa. We do not need any help in that area. Um, So walk me through the trajectory. So you got this, you you start dealing with um, uh, Little Mermaid, and then was there another subject that you started dealing with until you get keep going and you realize... There is no reasoning with with people because you were on you were on the team. You were with everybody. You agreed with them with these issues, except you took a difference in this one little area. And that was enough to unravel their story to feel like you didn't need to talk anymore. What's that progression? Yeah. So I think that like the starting point was definitely Little Mermaid and maybe a few like micro things here and there. But it wasn't anything that I really thought about. Uh, Like in retrospect, I can see how it was all kind of leading up to it. But I think the BLM with the mixture of, of COVID was the thing that really set it off because mm. I'm seeing people be very reactionary and almost like if I had to compare it to something, it's like a child where where people are angry about something and they think resorting to violence and throwing things is somehow going to make things better. And then on the one hand, I'm hearing, okay, you got to stay home and flatten the curve because this virus is going to kill everyone. But hey, the, the BLM protesters, you know, they, they can go and do that because racism is a, is a epidemic and it's a public <laughs> health crisis. So they're okay. But MAGA supporters, you got to stay home because you're super spreaders. And I, that contradiction, I'm like, something is off about this i that's why I, I said the same thing i recently we were talking about this recently and i that was i mean i i was i had major doubts and concerns about the initial pandemic response and i, I was my you know I, all my flashing lights and warning lights were you know buzzers going off but 
But following the George Floyd thing and the riots, <laughs> yeah. that was when it was just on full display. When you have, especially in the in the churches, you had all these churches not meeting, all these pastors saying, stay home, stay home. And then a bunch of the same pastors went out and joined the yeah. BLM marches. And I'm like, oh. Despicable. Right. This is this, These are the essential gatherings. Here's your holy gathering. But pretty terrible. Um, Grant, so t- uh, I want to, st- I want to go back to the question that, that sure. Knox asked earlier about the trajectory of the film. Yeah. So she becomes a Christian yeah. in the middle of this film. Um, yeah. d- did you see that coming? Did you see that happening? Were you, were, I mean, um, how much of your grandpa did you, you know, was going, <laughs> was, were, were you channeling here? Uh, I did, you know, Goku spirit bomb, you know, style, uh, <laughs> trying to call on. No. Uh, so yeah, I, I knew it was a possibility yeah. um, from before we started filming that I coming up on this whole ordeal. I was just praying about Lord, give me wisdom about what to say right. and when to speak and prayed for patience about all of it because it was a year long thing. Yeah. Um, while I knew that even if she, you know, didn't find God, that there was still this story here of mm. someone waking up from the lies of the left. Right. And so it was like, that's worth pursuing. Yeah. That's worth pursuing. I want to pursue that. Um, and I, I basically finished the structure of the documentary beginning of 2022 and her then boyfriend, now husband, Saul became a Christian right Right then. Oh, and did he did he beat you, Vanessa? He beat you. <laughs> yes. Oh, wait a what a man to lead us home. Yeah. Like- <laughs> I I thanked God for that. Yeah. I thanked God that wow. it was Saul who who and found yeah. All, and also like through conversations with you or yeah. okay. Yeah. And then it was uh probably a few weeks after that that uh Vanessa came to the Lord and I had just finished the structure of the documentary. So from the beginning of the doc to the end of the doc, it's all structured in this particular narrative. And I'd been working on it for yeah. a year at that point. Yeah. And uh, then they become Christians. And I'm like, I'm not putting it in. <laughs> it was like, I was too late. And, <laughs> yeah, it, was, it was too late. late. Sorry, Lord. <laughs> yeah. My story is not changing. People, <laughs> people will find out that she found the Lord. Like they'll watch the doc and then they'll go follow her on YouTube. And then they'll see these videos talking yeah. about God. And I'm like, okay, that's, that's wonderful. Right. You know, but then you know, all of the tightening up of a documentary, all of the little bits and pieces and the fine tuning of the documentary just take so long. And then by the time I, uh, another year later, it's this, she's already grown in her faith a lot more than someone, a typical Christian does mm. in a year, as well as Saul, like both of them. And it was like hearing from enough people who I was screening the documentary to at that time, I was hearing the ending is fine, but it feels like it could use more catharsis. I'm like, well, <laughs> I have this great, <laughs> I have this great opportunity yeah. to use this, you know, the silver bullet. And I was like, okay, I, I need to put it in there. And so we flew out Vanessa and Saul one last time out here to Moscow. Um, and we filmed a final interview um, talking about that. This, so. So. It's, it's so funny. Like so many, so many Christian filmmakers are like trying to put that in. Right. Like, like they're trying, <laughs> right. they're trying to do the gospel track at the right. end. Right. And, and it's funny that like, no, you, you like your, your eye was on the ball of, I'm, I want to tell the story. Yeah. What's the story here? And, and, and the Lord sort of pushed you into it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and well, for, for one, I think it was a matter of time that I didn't know it was going to take this long to tighten it up. Yeah, right. And that it was a matter of patience. And, but I wanted, I was praying throughout. I was praying like, Lord, please give me wisdom to know what, what, what to do here. I'm going to keep working on this right. and just make it clear. And that it, it happened when it needed to happen. And I was very, I've been very loose handed about this whole thing. Mm. Um, and at that time when they first became Christians, it was, I was loose handed about it, but it just didn't feel right. Right. Thank God that it took as long as it did because now it's there. I saw, uh, Vanessa, I saw the trailer and I tweeted out on Twitter. I was like, this is when I, okay. As a filmmaker myself, when I see something that's good, I'm like, oh, I want to see that. And right. to know that I know the filmmaker was even more surprising. And I had seen some of, because I remember watching, we, we tried to get on Twitch was a horrible place for us. We, didn't, we got no yeah. traction. I think it's one thing to be like, to stream something live. It's a whole nother thing to be a streamer. Right. right. That's a whole different kind of culture. It takes a whole different type of entertainment. Yeah. And people just think, well, we'll just go stream live on that platform. It's like, yeah, no, it's not the same thing. You're, you don't. And they, there's a diff, Am I right, Vanessa? There's a different form of entertainment between a streamer and somebody who streams. Yeah. It, yeah, definitely. I would agree. 
Yeah. So I, I don't, maybe you can tell us about what it takes to do some of that stuff, but it's just different culture. But when I saw the trailer, I was like, oh my goodness, I want to watch the film. The problem was <laughs> no one can watch the film because whoever has money at Lord ain't funded it yet. What's wrong with you people? Go fund the film. If you're on Lord TV, fund the film. There has to be a few of you watching this right now. I know who you're. I know who you are. <laughs> All right. So, we need it funded. I, yeah. It's, I, I, well, so I, I'm on Lure. Do you have a con- and, okay. and I don't remember seeing it. I, I didn't, maybe I didn't scroll down oh, far enough. Need, maybe not. It's probably I, my fault. I, 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 <laughs> yeah. I, so, I'm gonna blame. I'm gonna blame Graham. Yeah. It's probably. It's, it, it was the weirdest thing because after I got done watching, I watched it late last night. I was like, I have no idea how to tell people to go watch this right now because it's not funded. And so because it's not funded, it's not out where everybody can see it. But yeah. it's a great story. Yeah. It's a great story. And it was great filmmaking. I just got to say Thank the you. filmmaking. That's the first thing that caught my eye was a cinematic touch to it. And I was like, ah, oh, I can breathe easy. <laughs> and, and so I feel like I can trust this person to tell me a story that wouldn't waste my time. Yeah. And that's immediately what I saw when I saw the trailer. Yeah. Right. And the way it was designed, I was like, oh, this is great. And then knowing you have a storyteller <laughs> who mm-hmm. is actually a part of the whole thing and just yeah, go to lore, fund it. It's, it's gothics. Right? Is it the mm-hmm. Gothics or just Gothics? It's just Gothics right now. Yeah, that's okay. all it is. Vanessa. I, oh, there it is. I found it. Okay, good. I'm going to give, 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 give him your loot. I'm going to give him my loot, loot right now. There uh, we go. Okay, so. It's going up right now. Vanessa, there you I, gotta, go. I have to ask you, what is it now since you've changed, since God's changed your whole life upside down, how do you stream? How do you, what is a culture that, because your culture is different on streaming. Most Christians aren't in that culture. What is that world for you like now? You know, I'm still trying to figure it out. If I'm okay. being totally honest with you, because my my content it just goes through all of these fluctuations, and then it's like the I, I would say the majority of my audience don't believe in God. Right. <laughs> so it's been very interesting to see the reception, and I'm trying to still find a way that I can sort of tie it in all together. Because the majority of people that started following me wanted my reactions to like the world news and stuff like that, and. Uh, you know, I I think I've I've progressed so much in my faith now where now I recognize the underlining problem to all of the world's issues is really the rejection of God and moral relativism. And I think that I'm I'm trying to get people to recognize that without thinking, you know, I'm a crazy Bible thumping lady on YouTube. Uh, <laughs> so it's been it's been odd, I would say. And so it's kind yeah. of finding your space. Yeah. But I'm, I'm glad you're there. Yeah, I'm uh, glad you're there, too. Yeah, that's, but, uh, that's neat. Because I, I was thinking about it. They're really you're having to carve out a lane that doesn't exist right now in that world. Christians aren't into the streaming world. They're they're hardly into the gaming world, you know, and if they are into the game where there's only a few people that they'll go in and, and you know, watch or engage with. Right. So then how do you reach that audience? And, and since this is your full time job, it makes things really complicated. <laughs> <laughs> right? Oh, yep. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Man, I, I'm I'm excited to see what happens next. Yeah, so Lore TV, yep. Gothics, go fund it. Yeah. Um where can we are where are you still streaming on Twitch? No. <laughs> okay. So how do people just just YouTube? How do people follow you and engage yeah. with what you're doing? Yeah, you can find me on YouTube, YouTube at Gothics TV. You can also go to www.gothics.tv to find all my links. Um but yeah, I'm I'm around. I'm on the internet. Look me up. Don't, don't forget Rumble. You've been doing a lot, Rumble, a lot yeah. more of that. Rumble as well. I keep forgetting. It's like the stepsister child. Yeah. of yeah. <laughs> You ain't lying. Yeah. yeah. I, have you been paying attention to the whole Menosphere conversation and kind of the pushback against oh <laughs> anti, the anti-feminist movement? Are you paying attention to that at all? A little bit. It's wild. (laughs) There's a lot going on there. I'm just wondering, what's your take on kind of like Pearl Davis and kind of how she's pushing the the envelope opposed to feminism, but kind of this Christless um, fight against Mm. feminism? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think in some ways she has a lot of good points and some other ways it, it falls short and it's, it's not enough. You need Christ to, to send home the message. But I think f- from, from my perspective, I think a lot of the things that I find distressing isn't necessarily the fact that she has the opinions that she has. It's the fact that a lot of people who seem to be taking the moral high ground, uh, are attacking her in the same ways that I find is very similar to people attacking mm. me, which is a little bit bizarre. Mm. 
so I don't I don't I don't know what that's about. But, um, you know, I think the the rebuttal to bad advice is good advice and, and bad philosophy is good philosophy. So, you know, if you can come up with a better argument than something that she has, just do it. You don't got to tear people down. It's weird. You know, it's, it's that childish fit stuff again that she's yeah. talking about, where it's like oh, you don't have an argument, so scream, yeah. you just scream <laughs> yeah. louder. Like, yeah. it, like yeah. it, the kids in the toy department, you know, they don't get the toy they want, they lay down and kick and scream, and and that's it's just childish. It only yeah. helps the position of the person who made the initial argument. That, yeah. as, lo- as long as you don't give in to the fit, yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. You know, like, if you stand there and smile and be like, "What? Mm-hmm. What are you doing?" You're a good parent. Yeah, mm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> be a good parent. Be a good parent. Yeah. Yeah. Parent your children. Uh, well. Very grateful for both of you. Uh, um, great to have everybody you Everybody needs to see the film. Thank you for Seriously. coming on Cross Politic yeah. very much. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. Thank you for having us. Yeah, if you're single, get married. If you're married, have you some kids. And if you have kids, go baptize them. Until next time, love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. Go fight, laugh, and feast. This is Cross Politic. It is the duty of the free man to resist tyranny at every turn. Every man will either watch his freedom stripped away or take action to protect what he loves. Introducing the A3, the newest revolutionary body armor from Armored Republic. The A3 is the new standard for lightweight multi-hit body armor. A3 plates are incredibly light at 4.6 pounds. The patented design captures fragmentation while remaining multi-hit capable. The A3 will stop up to M80 ball, yet comes in at only 0.7 inches thick. The A3 is the thinnest NIJ.06 compliant or certified composite standalone plate that includes the drop test. The A3 is the first of its kind, patent pending, that combines an alloy strike face with polyethylene backing, revolutionizing body armor technology by providing strength and durability while remaining sleek and maneuverable. The A3 is the new standard in lightweight body armor. The fight against tyranny just got stronger.